So in this section of the notes, we're going to talk about something called a stationary distribution. And the idea here is a stationary distribution is a distribution where if you ever get to that distribution on states, you keep the same distribution forever. It's a slightly tricky concept to get your head around. So we're going to start with an example. And our example will be our old friend, the two-state broken printer Markov chain. So let's look at that. So here it is, our old friend, the two-state broken printer Markov chain. And it says, suppose we start from this particular initial distribution. So let's think, what's the probability that we're in state 0 at time 1? As in, what's the probability that x1 equals 0? Well, as always, there's only one thing we can do, which is we can condition, right? We can condition on where we start. So maybe we start in state 0 and stay there. Or maybe we start in state 1 and move there. Uh, the probability we start in state 0 is beta over alpha plus beta. That's given. The probability we move from 0 to 0, that's uh, this edge here, right? So that's 1 minus alpha. Uh, for, and vice versa on the other one, probability is alpha over alpha plus beta. And the probability we move is that one, beta. Uh, so if we put that all over a common denominator, what do we have? We have beta minus alpha beta plus alpha beta on the top, alpha plus beta on the bottom, and that all comes out as beta over alpha plus beta. But note that's exactly the same probability as it was the time before. Right. So the probability we're in state 1 at time 0 was lambda 0. The probability we're in state 1 at time, state 0 at time 1 is also lambda 0. Similarly, we could do the calculation for px1 equals 1, either by doing the calculation in the same way or noting that probabilities have to add up to 1 to see that that will still be alpha over alpha plus beta equals lambda 1. So we picked lambda 0, lambda 1 as the initial distribution. The Markov chain moved on a state, and it was still the distribution. So we can just continue the argument again, right? After two steps, the same distribution. After three steps, the same distribution. So we always have probability xn equals 0 being beta over alpha plus beta equals lambda 0, and the probability xn equals 1 being alpha over alpha plus beta equals lambda 1 for all n, as long as we start from the distribution lambda 0, lambda 1, as long as we start from the distribution lambda, lambda 1. So we could call this a stationary distribution, right? Because if we start there, it also describes our distribution at time 1, and at time 2, and at time 3, and at time 4, and at time 5. So we could call that stationary distribution. Note that we're not saying that the Markov chain stays in the same place. right? The Markov chain can still move from 0 to 1 to 1 to 0. But if you say, ah, what's the probability that it's, at, that it's in state 0 at time n? It doesn't actually matter what n is. We've got this kind of steady state thing going on. Another thing, way to think about this could be uh, if you have like a thousand balls and you place lambda naught of them there, there on zero and lambda one on of, of them there on one, then you come back in a while, there'll still be about a thousand lambda zero of them on zero and there'll still be a thousand lambda one of them on one. It won't be the same balls that started there necessarily, but the same proportion will always be sitting on 0 and 1 forever. So what's the, what's the kind of general theorem here? So suppose we start in a distribution, well, let's call it pi now. And this is for some general Markov chain. So pi equals uh, pi i, where i goes through whatever the state space is. 
then where are we after one time step? Well, probability that x1 equals j, say, is, well, we'll condition over where we started. Right, so sum over i. We started in i with probability pi, pi i, then to get to j would have had to have had probability p, uh, would have had to have moved there with probability p i j. So that's the distribution after one step. So if that is equal to the distribution after zero steps, as in if that is equal to pi j, then we have one of these stationary distributions, right? After one step, the probability of being in state j is still pi j. Repeat the argument after two steps, after three steps, after four steps. It's still the case that the probability we're in state j is pi j. So that's going to be the definition, which we'll state in just a moment. But just let us note here that we have another one of these matrix vector multiplications, right? As in, if pi is a row vector, and it's important that it's a row vector, not a column vector, and this condition is that pi equals pi times p, because pi times p is that, ma is that vector matrix multiplication we've got there. So if pi is a row vector, then the condition we have is that pi equals pi p, where p is the transition matrix and pi is the row vector being that initial distribution. OK, so we can state that as a formal definition now. And here is that definition. Let xm be a Markov chain on the state space with transition matrix p. Pi is a distribution, which means that it's bigger than 0 and adds it to 1. And it's called a stationary distribution if it satisfies that equation there, which is the one we just stated. Or in matrix vector multiplication form, it's just pi equals pi p. And that's the definition of a stationary distribution.